Hello all, welcome to another quick learning. Today we're going back to CodeSignal to work on the database SQL coding exercises. If you're joining this in the middle of the playlist and you want to go to the first video in this series, I'll put a link in the description below so you can click that and go there if you want. Otherwise I'm going to the arcade, databases, and then we were making quite a bit of progress here. We're now on number 73 under this exotic dishes queries execution. You're working at a company that sells handmade toys. You're supposed to write a monthly report for your manager about how the company is doing. It takes a lot of time to create these reports manually, so you decided to write a function that will make the process easier. Information for your reports is given in three tables. So you've got an orders table that has order ID, uh, order type, either buy or sell, date placed, uh, order quantity, order price, so this is like stock information. Execution, the execution ID, order ID, uh, which is a key relating to the orders ID here. The execution date, execution quantity, execution price. And then there's a query table that has query name and the code. I'll show, I'll show you an example down here. In order to prepare the required values for your next report, you should create a new table with columns query name and val for each query name. The result of the executed query should be stored in the respective val column. The table should be sorted by query name in ascending order. All right. So here's the examples here. So you got kind of this information: uh, uh, buy or sell, uh, order quantity, the order price, and date, etc. This is details about the execution. And this is the queries that you want to run um, and show the data for, as seen here. So you want the average execution price, the count of executions, minimum order date, and the sum of the order quantity. That's what you want. So let's see how this can be done. So I found this code from someone else, and it's actually pretty good. And it's got some nice comments to show you what's actually being output. So let's look at this first, uh, the inner part of this concat. So the concat's just going to take uh, whatever you have in here separated by commas and put them together uh, into strings. So first it's going to do select uh, space. So here you're going to see that it's going to start here. So this is going to be the select space here. Then it's going to do the query name from this queries table. Because everything is from the queries table. Uh, so you'll see here we're going to grab the average execution price, count, executions, etc. So in this case, we're taking the average execution price. And you can see we already have the quotes here. So those are going to be surrounded by quotes. And then it's going to put a space and it's going to give it the alias query name. And then it's going to put a parenthesis here to put in a subquery. And in that subquery, we're going to put in the code uh, that's in this field here code. So there you see there. And then it just ends it uh, with another parenthesis. So you'll see that's what that did here and then it just puts val uh, to call that new column in the table val because we need to have columns that are called query name and val and then once you get past that concat what we have here is the outer select statement so you can see it's from the queries and we're selecting we're going to group concat and what we're going to do with group concat is we want to take all these and consolidate them all into one row uh, so that when the query executes it's all in one statement and you can put a separator uh, if you don't it'll by default I think does a comma to separate the different values so instead of having these different statements here in different rows of your query uh, we're just pasting them all together in one row, separated by our separator, which is union. So 
you can see they're all separated by union. And then we're just taking that and we're concatenating that by order by one, which in this case is the query name. And then at the end, you just prepare the query from A, at A. So at A, uh, so when you've got this at symbol, that means it's a session variable. So it'll be available as long as the session is running. And then you just execute that query. And it should give you an output like this when you execute the query. So if we go ahead and run the test, you'll see that that works. And if you had trouble with this one, uh, don't worry too much about it because it is labeled hard. So evidently a lot of people have had trouble with this one and it's kind of a difficult one to do because generally you're not doing this kind of prepare and execute query uh, with a procedure. You're just writing the, the select statement or whatever and, and executing that directly. So I hope you guys were able to follow along with that and I hope you guys join me for future videos. Thank you very much.